Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And here we're going to look at examples of distributions that possess the monotone likelihood ratio property. Example one is a binomial where n is given. And so our data is a binomial with parameters 1 and p, which some people would call that a Bernoulli. Then if we add them up, and of course some would call that y, let y equal this sum, but this sum is distributed with the binomial with parameters n and p. And this is the probably mass function for a binomial. So if we assume that p1 is greater than p0, and we, we create the likelihood ratio, then the top part is this, but we plug in p1 everywhere. And the bottom part is again this, but we plug in p0. Now things can cancel, so that cancels with this. We have the same exponent here, so we can combine them. We have the same exponent here, so we can combine them. Now since this is a subtraction, we can make this the product of this raised to the n, this raised to the minus sum of the xi. And then we can take the reciprocal to get rid of that negative. So then this over n is this piece here. And since they have the same sum, we can combine them into 1, right? So there's the p1 over p0. And then we took the reciprocal here to get rid of that negative. Well, this piece right here, this is a constant in regards to the x's. And this is greater than 1. I'm going to leave that as a homework assignment to you. Not hard to prove. And it's an increasing function in this statistic. So it is increasing in t of x, where t of x is the sum of the xi. So it does possess the monotone likelihood ratio property. The Poisson is example 2, where this is the density. And if we take a joint probability density, we get this. So it's the product of these n times. And if we assume, oh, I probably should say greater than 0. So uh, lambda 1 is greater than 0, which is great, uh, lambda... Lambda 1 is greater than lambda 0, which is greater than 0. Now the likelihood ratio, we take this density and put it here, but we put in lambda 1 everywhere. This piece, of course, is the joint density, but we put in lambda 0. This cancels. This we can, we can either combine or just leave it like this because it's constant, doesn't really matter. This right here we combine into this piece. And note that since lambda 1 is greater than lambda 0, this is greater than 1. So then this is an increasing function in the statistic, you know, t of x, which is equal to the sum of the xi. So in the normal case, let's assume mu is known, and let's let sigma 1 squared be greater than sigma 2 squared. Now this is the joint likelihood then we create the likelihood ratio where we plug in sigma 1 squared here for the numerator and sigma 0 squared in the density for the denominator. Now, for some reason, I skipped steps and just wrote down the likelihood. In the other examples, as I in example 1 and 2, I show the steps, but I don't here for some reason. Not sure why. Um, and, it, and it boils down to this. So this is a constant e to the this. Now, this has to be positive for this to be increasing. And this is positive because sigma 1 squared is bigger than sigma 0 squared, which makes this fraction smaller than this. When you add them, you get a positive number. So for this condition, the likelihood ratio is increasing in the statistic, the sum of the xi minus mu squared. Now some would maybe divide this by n minus 1. So you could divide by n minus 1 here, multiply by n minus 1, and then the statistic becomes the sample variance. So example 4, the normal case, we'll, this time we'll assume we know sigma squared. 
and let mu1 be greater than mu0. Here's the likelihood ratio. Now remember this is the, the joint density with mu1 plugged in and here's the joint density with mu0. Now this cancels and if we take this e, you know this exponential, to the top then it changes that sign. So this piece is here and I just expand the, the quadratic and then that minus becomes a plus and expand the quadratic. Now the x squared pieces um, cancel each other. The mu here, remember it's the sum so you got n of them and then it's divided by that. This piece is here and this piece, remember it's the sum, is here. And we take it out because it's a constant. And then what's left over, we can factor out of the sum of the xi. And this is positive because mu1 is bigger than mu0. So this is an increasing function in the statistic, the sum of the xi. Now again, a lot of people will divide by n here and multiply by n. And then the statistic becomes the mean. But either is fine. Now the gamma distribution will assume that alpha is known and beta 1 is greater than beta 0. Now notice that when I write the density for the, the joint density for the gamma, I put the beta in the denominator, right? That's just kind of the way I learned it and the way I like it. You could also put it in the numerator and it won't change things. So then the likelihood ratio becomes this density, but with beta 1 plugged in, which is here, right? That's the denominator, so it's here. Then the denominator is this with beta 0 plugged in. That cancels. Uh, this piece, the, the gammas cancel. This piece here is here. And then we take this to the top and we get this. We can factor out a sum of the xi. And this is positive because beta 1 is greater than beta 0. And so this is increasing in the sum of the xi. Now, the last example, chi-squared with k degrees of freedom. This is the joint density, which is the product of each of those little marginal densities. And we create the likelihood ratio. So it means we take this in the numerator with, say, k1 in for k. And then we put this in the denominator, say, k0 here. And then, and then we get this. We get lots of cancelizations. Um, this ends up being a constant, right? There's no x's here, and it's raised to the n. And then here... We, we get the product of the xi. So, see, right, this piece, there's no parameter, so it would cancel in that likelihood ratio. And we're left with this. Now, k1 is greater than k0, and these are integers, right? Chi-square uh, chi distribution. It doesn't have to be. But then this is, this is an increasing function in the product of the xi's when k1 is greater than k0. All right, well, that's all I have for this example. I think next video I'm going to show that the hypergeometric distribution has a monotone likelihood ratio. Hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.